This is CVTV live here at Wispapalooza in Las Vegas. I'm with Steve Jaleel of ET Industries. Uh, Steve, thanks for joining us today. And I know there's a lot of talk. Everybody's talking about 5G. Um, curious about how ET Industries fits into the 5G conversation. Uh, thank you, uh, Gerald, uh, for having me today. Um, I'm Steve Jaleel, Director of uh, Wireless Business Development at ETI, or ET Industries. Uh, so for 5G, which is a big buzz uh, nowadays in the wireless industry, we have to offer uh, beamforming networks with phased array antennas that provide multi-sector um, radiation patterns uh, for users or uh, service providers. Now, the uh, advantage there is uh, cost um, for the uh, the WISPs in, in terms of um, they, they, they lease out space for uh, one antenna radiating one beam out of one antenna. You now have one antenna that radiates multiple sectors. Hence, providing much more capacity and more customer base for the WISPs or internet service providers. So you're looking at um, higher performance for lower cost? Higher performance for lower cost and not only um, not only the lower cost is the main uh, uh, thing here is that you have an antenna that is scalable so you don't necessarily have to go ahead and use eight access points to have the eight sectors. You could start off with uh, let's say four access points or even even one with a switch. And then as you progress and get more customer base, you could eventually go to eight, uh, eight beams or even 32 beams. We have up to 32 beam antennas. Now talk to me a little bit about reliability with your antennas, uh, you know. That's a great question, Gerald. Um, there's a lot of talk about active antennas and active beamforming. Our approach is uh, completely passive. There's no electricity applied to this unit, so there's no power consumption. Um, there's a big myth in, in our industry that beam steering and beamforming is only done actively. Um, we come from a school of thought that uh, beam steering can be done passive. Hence, not uh, consuming any power. Right. So, um, uh, probably pretty handy for wisps in rural areas um, that might be prone to uh, outages and. and uh weather conditions. Definitely. And also, now that you mentioned rural areas, a big a big topic in rural areas is distance coverage. So now, with this high-gain antenna and narrow beams, you have the coverage you need in terms of distance, at the same time, multiplying capacity. Now, um, in, in the uh, 5 gigahertz and unlicensed spectrum, it's not a big deal. Uh, the um, You're not limited to spectrum. There's a lot of bandwidth. Now, it's a very polluted um, a band, there's many people transmitting and receiving at 5 gigahertz being unlicensed. That's when we introduce side lobe suppression and certain radiation patterns where you could repeat frequency and reduce the noise. Definitely a differentiator. It's a big differentiator uh, from uh, from your active uh, folks that are trying to sell you uh, active antennas. We have nothing wrong with active antennas, but in terms of uh, maintenance costs and things going wrong, there's too many variables with the active approach. Great. Um, you can send a message up to the tower and tilt the antenna in the azimuth and elevation mechanically. Uh, we believe that remote electric tilting introduces too many active components into the antenna, hence having the possibility of active components going bad inside of the antenna, bringing up the maintenance cost. Also, when you actively change the pattern to tilt the antenna uh, as radiation pattern, you could also introduce side lobes. Side lobes are a service provider's nightmare, and we don't want that to happen. So we want to provide you an optimal radiation pattern and then have the ability to move it mechanically, electromechanically. Steve, can you give me an example of a good uh, customer win that you've had recently? Definitely. Uh, in the year 2017, about a year ago, we were in uh, New Zealand and uh, at the unlicensed band, we uh, we covered, we did a rural deployment with our multi-beam antenna system and we're able to reach 19 kilometers with a 64 qualm across the uh, the uh, azimuth of 90 degrees. We then moved the deployment to Auckland, which is an urban environment, and uh, we also had phenomenal results. We had about a gigabit per second aggregate in download speeds. Now, we have a case study which we put together, which you could find on our website. There is a link, and you could download the whole case study and white paper. Yeah, I 
understand there are, there are a lot of additional challenges in an urban environment uh, when it comes to deployment. Yeah, the uh, urban environment is uh, there's a lot of obstructions and uh, a lot of things that can go um, that might hinder connectivity. But that is when uh, these high beam antennas and side lobe suppression can reduce interference and provide better coverage. Do you have any other messages for the WISP community? Uh, we want them to check us out. Um, we have done many deployments around the world. We have the uh, data and we have the case studies which we could all share with the community. Uh, and what is your website? Our website is uh, www.etiworld.com and you can find our uh, multi-beam systems under the multi-beam section.